A mangled fridge, broken ceiling joists hanging precariously, layer upon layer of rubble. These are the footprints of war. Two years on from Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, and war rages on. Around me here in Mykolaiv, a key strategic port city in the south of Ukraine, lie the ruins of buildings. The drumbeat of war beats still, but somehow, despite the bombardment and the bloodshed, life continues. We're here to find out just how. How have the last two years been for you since the out outbreak of the, the, the invasion? <laughs> Uh, they went in the basement. Here? Yeah. You were li living in the basement? Whenever there is shelling, uh, we go down. When he heard the explosion, Andre sought to save his most precious gift, his nine-month-old daughter. Their home is just 60 metres away. Racing downstairs, he found baby Sasha and wife Vlada. Together, barefooted on shattered glass, they ran for their lives. When you heard the explosion, you ran down to get your wife and Sasha, and then you all ran down the stairs to here? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Homes were damaged, with one person killed. Schools have been shut in Mykolaiv, but one hosts a mobile learning centre run by Save the Children. For kids, it is a chance to learn to live again. Little Sasha patiently cuts out a figure of an angel before carefully colouring it in. She and other children stick their paper creations on a map of Ukraine. The angels are to signify peace, but that feels a long way off for this nation. Under the shadow of war, Alicia's pupils learn but later, study is punctured by a reality all too familiar. It's time to head for the exit. Elsewhere in the city, a similar scene unfolds later in the day. Oh, it's very, very beautiful. Very beautiful. You go on there? Half a dozen kids play at a daycare centre under the watchful eye of Oksana. But then, another air alert. Just minutes ago, these children here, some as young as four, were playing upstairs. And then an air alert, and we rushed downstairs to this shelter. And now we wait. This is reality for people in Ukraine. This is not uncommon for children. It has become a way of life. Before long, we go upstairs and it's time to go home. Kids play on swings outside as if nothing has happened. Childhood continues. <laughs> Elsewhere in the region, a father is rebuilding his home and his life. Nearly two years ago, Vladimir's family, three generations in one car, fled as their village became the front line. But the vehicle he was in with his wife, son, and mother-in-law was caught in crossfire. His 71-year-old mother-in-law was killed, shot in the head. His son, now 14, had his cheek pierced by a bullet. Their story is one of tragedy, like so many others during this war. But help is being provided. The family has a cow, courtesy of Save the Children. The milk it produces is sold. Back at Andre's home, he shares a simple wish for his baby's future. He wants her to grow happy and never face the test of war again. <laughs>